All right, let's try to get us through mitosis cell division. That's the last piece of the cytology chapter that we're going to do. Cell division, the word for cell division is mitosis. It is very important for cells to divide because if we want to grow or renew our cells, we got to do that. Most of our cells do divide, but not all. Generally speaking, the more specialized the cell is, the less common division is. For example, red blood cells do not divide. As a matter of fact, as I said earlier, they don't have a nucleus. So they're sort of like bags of hemoglobin, but they're still cells, of course. Uh, neurons are not a very highly specialized cell or cells, and many of them also do not divide. Prior for cell, to cell division, we need to assure that the genetic material is going to be in both of the offsprings, both daughter cells. So we have to make a copy of the DNA. Visualize a double helix, an enzyme coming in and unzipping the double helix, making two single strands, and then bringing nucleotides that are complementary base pair nucleotides and out of the two single strands making two double strands again because we bring the nucleotides and add on to these single strands on each side. Um, so we have two double helixes with the genetic material copied so it's twice the same copy. Now what we have to do after that, we have to assure that this genetic material goes to each side of the cell. So when it divides, it, one copy is in each daughter cell and not the two copies are stuck in one of them and the other one doesn't have anything. We can describe this process in four phases. Um, Sometimes we call it five phases, but the ones we're going to study here is four phases. We have a pro phase. Pro means before. A meta phase. Meta means between or next. An ana phase. Ana means upward. And a telo phase. And telo means end or goal. Let's look at them. Here we can see a nice, nice graph of how we can... What happens here is like there's two stars that sort of occur and they are connecting with um, asters, they call them the rays. The center of the stars are centrioles and we mentioned those in the cell uh, organelles. And the middle here, what you can see lining up here is as a fact the genetic material that's copied, the copied DNA. They line up and then slowly those stars, as you can see here, they pull the middle part in half and they pull each pull genetic material towards their end, a copy of the DNA. And here you can see the process happen further as the, the, the DNA moves towards that center of the stars. And then slowly these asterase, they disappear and we can get, we call it furrows here that that go in these indentations and that's the beginning of the cleavage of the two daughter cells and then at the end as you can imagine we have two of them on the bottom left we have cells that show these uh, processes in, in different stages in different cells up here we just have a, a graphic depiction of two daughter cells that are created and then the top left is where we really get into the description of the meat and the potato a little more. But let's go in and describe them first. So the prophase is the first one. Chromosomes become visible before they're a bunch of spaghetti. And we can't really differentiate them. In this phase also the nucleus disappears. And those star-like centers, the centrioles, migrate to the different poles, to each side of the cell. Then we get into metaphase, and in metaphase we have a spindle, it's called, that stretches across from centriole to centriole and makes asters or rays with an equatorial plane in the middle. 
like an equator that is. And that's the place where the chromosomes can line up and the asters are attached at the centromeres, which are when you visualize these two legs, this X looking thing, which is a chromosome, where they cross is where the, central, the centromere is. And then in anaphase, the chromosomes have separate and are pulled towards the opposite poles. And in telophase, the chromosomes uncoil. It's kind of like a prophase in re reverse. The nuclear membrane is formed, and ultimately, the cell bodies constrict and cleave. They separate. Let's look at that again. At the top here, we get the spaghettis. We slowly have, in prophase, we have them appear. We can recognize them under uh, dark, uh, under a, a strong enough uh, visualization microscope. We see the centrioles as they create the asters that go across from centriole to centriole. And then in this phase here, this is going to be the metaphase, uh, or slowly starting to get into the metaphase, and the chromosomes line up or start lining up on this middle plane here, this, this center, which is called the equator. Here it's nicely shown, and that's really metaphase here. So technically, the top three pictures are all prophase, and now we're in metaphase right here. And then you can see as we go to anaphase where these two chromosomes are pulled towards the poles. And then we have telophase, which is essentially the prophase in reverse, where the chromosomes, they uncoil. Uh, the centrioles sort of uh, disappear in terms of the, creating the asters and the rays. And the, 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 the cell starts dividing. And, and, and the division can also be called cytokinesis and we get two daughter cells. So again, four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Now we got a problem because we got sex cells. And as we know, the egg and the sperm come together, and we both we get 23 chromosomes from each of the parents, and they create a 46 at the end of the day, which is what a set of chromosomes in a diploid organism, or in us as a diploid organism. The meiosis is the term that we use for a maturation division, or we also call it a reduction division. This is a way, a process to create offspring cells, or eggs and sperms, with only 23 chromosomes in them. It's a two-step process. The first step is like mitosis, where the DNA gets copied. Each daughter cell gets either most of the maternal or the paternal DNA, times two. Sometimes we have fragments that cross over, giving us diversity. So there's a little bit of difference than just to the, the copying of it uh, in, that was uh, happening in mitosis. But then the second step is when we have no copying of the DNA, but we still divide the cell into daughter cells. And at that point, then, the 46 chromosomes get reduced to 23. And this is the way the process looks. It's a lot more complicated than that, but we'll leave it at that for today. So I hope that helps. Please let me know. Give me feedback. Thank you.